Good morning, and welcome to the Underwood Baptist Church Daily Devotional for Wednesday, March 8th. On this day in 1669, Mount Etna, on the island of Sicily, began rumbling and emitting gas. Over the next few weeks, the volcano would erupt, and lava would flow down the mountain to wipe out 14 towns, with the lava flow and the hazardous gases killing more than 20,000 people. Mount Etna is the most active volcano in Europe still. With multiple eruptions recorded since 475 BC, including another erup eruption in 1169 that killed at least 1,500 people, and with frequent periods of time where it would, and still does, spew ash and lava across the island. But in spite of the dangers that come with living in the shadow of a, volca of a volcano, towns and villages have repeatedly sprung up around it because the eruptions created fertile soil. Now, you might think that if you live next to a volcano, you would watch for signs and leave. So that, so that means this eruption must have come as a surprise. But no, this was not a sudden explosion like with Mount St. Helens. This took place for weeks, and it took weeks for the lava to reach many of the places, including the town of Catania that's 18 miles south of the mountain, where 17,000 people nearly 85% of the population died weeks after the initial eruption started, hoping they could either divert the lava, that the lava would somehow stop, or that the city's walls would protect them. This reminded me of this morning's scripture. Let's start with Isaiah 53 verse 1. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? This verse is part of a section in Isaiah focused on how despite the fact that God had sent numerous, numerous prophecies and warnings about the Messiah, when Jesus came, he would be and was rejected of his people. Paul took it a little further in Romans 10 when he applied that same principle, not just to the Israelites, to, to Jesus' people, but to the world at large, where we read in verses 13-17, through 17, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him and whom they, whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Then verse 16 says, But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Many people have heard the gospel. Many people have heard God's warning, but have chosen to ignore it. Maybe they think it's not real. Maybe they think it's just made up. Maybe they think they have more time. They can always do it later. Maybe they think there's something else that's going to save them. Or maybe they just don't want to give up their sin. But eventually it'll destroy them. And there are Christians who ignore the warnings and dangers as well. There are many things in our own lives that we know are not good for us, that we know are not pleasing to God, and that we know are dangerous to us. But we either downplay it, saying it's not that dangerous, we think we can get out of it whenever we want, or we think that we have some other protection. But in reality, the things God tells us to avoid, that we still hold on to, can and will destroy us, our families, and our testimonies. And then when that happens we're no longer able to effectively spread the gospel so that those who haven't heard can hear and heed to the warning. The people in Catania were not ignorant of the danger they faced. They knew where they lived. History told them the volcano had erupted before. But at some point after the last eruption, someone decided that the short-term benefit of living there was too good to pass up on. And they took the chance to build their home in the shadow of the volcano. And then others eventually followed building villages and cities. And probably saying or thinking at some point, well, it can't be that dangerous if all these other people are doing it. Then, even when the warning signs came and the lava was coming towards the city, instead of leaving, instead of getting out away from the danger, they looked for ways to stay. Kind of like Lot's wife. They wanted to stay where they were and not give it up. They were so drawn to it. They, it's what they had accustomed to. And eventually, it was too late. Eventually, there was nothing they could do 
and eventually they were destroyed. As Christians, we should know the danger. The Word of God tells us, and the Holy Spirit guides us to know what things are dangerous to us, how we should avoid sin, and gives us knowledge on how we're supposed to keep ourselves from it. And it's our job to make sure we avoid it, and then to tell others about it, so they can see the danger and the path to safety as well. We cannot make sure they believe. We can't make them act. We can't even make sure they act and heed the warning. But we can make sure they see the signs and they know what they need to do. So this morning, I hope you'll look at your life and look for places that you may have put yourself in danger. Look for places where you may be ignoring the warning signs. Or maybe you can see them, but you just don't want to give something up. Focus on those things. Give them to God. Let Him help you out of the danger. Let Him show you in His Word what you need to do. Let the Holy Spirit convict you and respond to it. Then, once you've taken care of that, sound the warning for the world around you so they can have someone to tell them and then they can choose to believe and escape. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the warnings that you give us. We thank you that you don't just abandon us. We thank you that you show us when we're off the right track. We thank you that you have given the, us the gospel that we can hear and respond to. And we ask you to help us to just make sure that we have the right testimony so that we can take it to those who need it. We just ask you to watch over us all. God us, protect us, helps us out our day, helps us out the rest of the week. We thank you praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for your time this morning. I hope this was a blessing. Please come back tomorrow for Brother Evan's devotion, and I'll be back next week. Goodbye.